Okay, so I know it's pretty late in the day. It's about 5 till 10 p.m. right now. Um, but I just finished reading Elven Star. And I'm, I apologize, it, it's really, really humid. In fact, hold on, I have to turn on the fan. It's so blistering hot. But, uh... doesn't burn me. Ow! Okay, okay. No, wait, wait, wait. I should have that on. Oops! Okay. As we all know, light produces heat. But, yeah. I just recently finished Elven Star. And, uh... Dragon Wing took place in the world of Arianus, which is the world of error. And, uh... Arianus is the world of error. It's set up like... certain continents, or... not continents, but, uh, cities are set up uh, on land masses at different elevations. Pieces of land. And what separates them is air. So, but that's, uh, that's in book one. Book two, uh, Elven Star takes place in the world of Prian. And Prian is the world of fire. And Prian is, uh, an inverted globe which would be if the earth were in an, an inverted globe it would be constant daylight because this bear with me it would be us like the entire planet surrounding the sun and it would always be daylight so yeah Anyways, before I continue on with this uh, review, I just want to read this passage from the beginning. And it's titled, Jungle Leviathans. The giant approached, and now Pathan could see why it had seemed the jungle was moving. Its body was covered from head to toe with leaves and vines. Its skin was the color and texture of tree bark. Even when the giant was extremely close, Pathan had difficulty separating it from the, its background. The bulbous head was bare, and the crown and the forehead, and the crown and forehead that were a whitish color and bald, stood out against it against the surroundings. Glancing around swiftly, the elf saw that there were. 20 or 30 of the giants emerging, emerging from the jungle. Excuse me. Gliding towards them. Their movements graceful and perfectly, unnaturally silent. Pathan shrank back against the tree trunk. It was a hopeless gesture. There was obviously no escape. The heads... Excuse me again with their awful dark and empty holes stared straight at them. The nearest one put its hands upon the edge of the fungus and jerked it, uh, jerked on it. The ledge trembled beneath Pathan's feet. Another giant joined its fellow, large fingers grabbing, gripping. Pathan looked down at the huge hands with a terrible kind of fascination, saw that the fingers were stained red with dried blood. <clears throat> Anyways, on uh, to expand on that, uh, Elven Star is uh, takes place, as I said, on Priam, and there is a group of people whom Haplo meets. Uh, one of them's name is Pathan, who is an elf. Another is Aleatha, who is his sister. 
um, Druger, who is an uh, is a uh, a dwarf, and two two humans by the name of, by the name of Roland and Riga. But more and more importantly, there is one more companion. Uh, that he meets, and that is the wizard. Uh, his name is Z uh, what the hell is his name? Uh, Ziffnab, who is if you if anybody watching this has ever read uh, the Dragonlance Chronicles, I'm sure that you remember Fizbin. Uh, Fizbin, the name Fizbin is actually trademarked to drag. Uh, uh, Wizards of the Coast or something like that. It's a tra trademark name. And uh, they even specify that in the book. That it was trademarked. Uh, but Ziffnab... <clears throat> one of the most memorable characters. It is one of the most memorable, memorable characters in this series. Uh, he references Star Wars, um, Lord of the Rings, um, just the former, like, big movie stars from, like, Hollywood back in the day, like, in, like, Marilyn Monroe or something, you know, uh, people like that. Um, just, <laughs> it, it, it's... He's a one-of-a-kind character. He makes you laugh. And, of course, Haplo. Uh, Haplo meets these companions of his, and when he meets them, uh, throughout the book, these companions of his are being pursued uh, by these, uh, and, and uh, these giants, which are known as Titans. Okay? And it gets to the point where Haplo happens to encounter one of these, these titans, and he is able, they see that he is able to fight against, uh, fight back against it. So, uh, but eventually the titans corner them, because he can't, I mean... There's so many that he can't fend them off, like, fend them all off. So, they go back to his ship, which, uh, by the way, in the first book, it was named Dragonwing. In the second book, it is renamed by Ziffnab to Dragonstar. And they fly... Uh they fly to the stars, which is why it's called Elven Star. Uh, and once they uh, reach... Once they get to where they're going, it's exactly the same as it was uh, where, where they had... Uh, uh, where they... The, their destination, in other words, where they wanted to go, looks exactly the same as Prion did. Only it is uninhabited. And when they get there, they find, uh, Haplo finds this, you can't really see it because it's really dark, but they find this, uh, he finds this, uh, city there that's uninhabited. But it was once inhabited by, uh, to make a long story short, Haplo is a is a uh, what's known as a patron, and there's patrons and Sartan uh, Sart S A S A R T A N patrons and Sartans, and they're like they don't they don't like to work together, but way 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 back when they did work together, and. I'm giving out so many spoilers, it's not funny. <laughs> but 
they both built this city. And elves, dwarves, and humans are known as mensch, which mensch is uh, basically the lesser known, like the lesser beings. Okay. So. There's more, there's a little bit more to it, because I'm not giving out, I'm not going to give out the ending, but it is well worth a read. And next on my reading, my, my list to read is going to be volume number three, Fire Sea, uh, of the Deathgate Cycle, volume three. I appreciate any who watched this. Feel free to send me any suggestions. And until next time, thank you.